All right. Um, so in this form right here, this function, see how we've got this minus 8 right here? So, again, let's just look at the basics of this exponential function graph stuff. You'd have something like this, right? Now, since we're subtracting 8, really what we've, take, we've done to this graph is we've moved it down 8 spaces. Something like this, okay? And we would have moved it. I'm just showing this on that y-axis. We just moved it down eight spaces. So it would be like graphing two to the power of x plus one, but then moving it down eight units. So the exponents, this may be helpful for you guys. If we add or subtract anything to the exponent, it'll move the graph to the left or the right respectively. Now if we start subtracting stuff, it's moving it down. If that was plus eight, we would have moved it up eight units. So there's a big difference, but again, we have to notice that that minus 8 is not in the exponents like it was in that last example. All right. And in this you would solve. I got a lot of space in my table. Not that we all need that many spaces, but again, I would highly recommend it using at least five spaces on this thing so we can see, hopefully, the behavior of this graph. Um, so let's see. Just looking at that 2 to power of x minus one, uh, plus 1. If I wanted that exponent to be 0, I wouldn't want to have x to be negative 1. All right. So that would give us 2 to the power of negative 1 plus 1 is 0, minus 8. That's really just 1 minus 8. So that's negative 7. So this shows right here, just this point, negative 1, negative 7, that it's been moved downward, right? And again, it should, it should never cross this line where uh, the y is negative 8 because we've moved it down 8. So let's find these other values. So I'm going to move more negative like this. And then we'll make it more positive like this, just for the x values that I'm choosing. <clears throat> so let's see, when we got 2 to the power of 1 plus 1, that's... 2 squared, which is 4, 4 minus 8 would be negative 4. So we got 0, negative 4, which is this point. Then we got, uh, what did I do right there? That was 1, right? Yeah, let me, <laughs> it's the same value for here, so there's 1, 4, 1, negative 4. So that's this one. Let's try where x is 0. That'd be better. 2 to the power of 0 plus 1 is 2. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. So 0, negative 6. That looks a lot better. And then I've got 2. So 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. All right. Now, this is... I, I did probably too many points just to show the behavior of this graph, but... If it fits, well, I guess we should, probably should show it. So what would we get if we had a 3 right here? That'd be 2 to the power of 4, which is 16 minus 8 is 8. So 3, 8. Now we can see that point. What happens if we make these more negative? So 2 to the power of negative 2 plus 1 is 2 to the power of negative 1. That's a 1 half minus 8, which would be a negative 7 and 1 half. So negative 2 and negative 7 and 1 half gives us this point. <clears throat> and then uh, 3 would be a negative 7 and 3 fourths. Yeah, I'm skipping some steps on this. But again, that's just showing that that line is going to get really close to the line y equals negative 8. So I can draw that line now. Hopefully yours looks a little bit better than mine. And then to the right. That looks pretty good. 